Good day. Today I'm going to show you how to install a cargo rack on a bicycle with disc brakes. So uh, this is a 1991 Bridgestone CB1. I've been slowly putting it together uh, with new modern parts and reinforced some stuff for disc brakes. Made some tabs to mount them up and uh, we'll see if it kills me or not when it's all done. But either way, for now, I'll show you how to mount a cargo rack on one. So when you have a disc brake, normally they would mount in these areas and obviously your discs in the way. So just not any cargo rack, just fits. You got to have one that's made for disc brakes. So I got this here. Ibera carrier frame mounted for heavier top and side loads. It takes the pack rack pannier compatible system and it fits 26 to 29 inch frames. Durable, light aluminum. So, let's see how this goes together. I'm gonna clip these guys off. Maybe, there we go. We'll just use them as the tools. Boom, just twist these twists. And eventually you snap them off. Like a wrench. Ooh, Ibera. I wish this came with the uh, Celeste coloring on it. That would match this bike beautifully. So, we've got a few things here. These are the levers that'll mount here. They attach to this bracket in there. Um, we come further forward here. Into the bag. I'd imagine we got all the rest of the hardware and stuff. Uh, yep, and some little instructions and a little bag of hardware. You got your little legs for the lower mounts um, and other stuff. That's really all I can say about that at this point. Uh, all right, so here's all our stuff. It goes through the tools that are required. We need a five, a four, and a three millimeter Allen key. And supposedly that is it. So I'll pull this out. I got a three, a four, and a five. What do you know? Isn't that handy? So Stanley metric. I've had this forever. Uh, typically Stanley tools don't seem to meet the standard of actual use. But their Allen wrenches do. Let's open this up and get the hardware out. Boom. All right. Everything is in a big pile. So now we've got a big pile of stuff. We've got figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four, and figure five. I'm assuming that those are going to be steps as well. Uh, cool. So, figure one. We want to take these things, and these have screws in them as well. And we want to put them on these big legs. So, judging by the picture, it looks like those legs might go downward. And uh, this is going to go through here, like that. Boom. Step one. Now let's uh, make its twin. Its opposite twin. Uh, I'd also assume, just like the hardware, just like the pictures, we want our hardware facing out so we can access it. Now, figure two is for brakes without discs. Well, that's not us, so we'll skip that. So we're on for bikes with disc brakes because I have those all right and then if you look here you got some mounting stuffs here so it looks like they both start with putting these in here so I thought they went through the brackets on the back and this was a cute little tail on it not the case not the case at all goes through the front on these and apparently these are slides to adjust for your width whatever that may be so let's get these roughed in here I'm not gonna tighten them up all the way yet because I don't know where they actually go we're just gonna get them in a little bit so they're a little snug I'll do the same over here so this thing's not sliding out all the time take so this one's gonna 
be our five millimeter wrench here. All right, somewhat snuggy dug. Now we'll take this one and we're gonna do, guess what? The same thing. So, four millimeter wrench for these screws to go into the top. Put them in there. And we'll do the same thing, snug as a bug in a rug. But they're not on lockdown like the rest of the country. Same here, we'll just get them in place. There they are, they're in place. Now, I want to install the bottom legs. So, for the bottom legs, we have these, and they go in here. Uh, now, I'm not sure which hole this will go in, so this is where you want to try and start lining this up. So, if that's going to go there, where do I want for height? It's going to go in one of these original holes that were originally on my frame. And we're going to pick the height. So probably right there actually we'll set it super low for low center of gravity because that is nice very nice low center of gravity there's some pretty nice looking screws on there as well um, let's see they're the four millimeter yes they are we'll get that snugged in there as well so they have the three holes on here. So you can put it in the one that's appropriate for your height that you want to be. So it's completely adjustable. And by completely, I mean it looks like it has about an inch and a half. So this is a 26 inch wheel, a 559 if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, but I only have a one and a half inch tire on it. If you put a larger tire on there, I'm sure you would need to use these other holes anyway. Uh, it advertises fitting up to, I think, like a 29 inch bike, but unless you got like road tires or something, I don't see it happening. All right, the next step, we wanna take these long screws, because I have disc brakes, so they supply these standoffs that you use with disc brakes. Put the washer under the head of the screw, Put the screw through the hole, put the standoff on there, and then we line it up and start screwing. So I don't have a kickstand on this bike, and as you can see, that makes this just a little unpleasant because I have to do it against the table. Uh, uh, if you had a kickstand, I'd imagine this could be done with much greater ease. So I'm not going to tighten this up all the way. Just like everything else, I'm just going to get snug as a bug in a rug. Like my buddy Doug. Alright, then we're going to take this other washer. Put it on the other screw. We're going to pull the bike out which this is where it gets super tricky without a kickstand right I'm not gonna pull it out there we go that's out enough <clears throat> and now if you look it's kind of wonky isn't it well guess what this thing might need a little muscle and you know what it's going to get a little muscle so we'll put that screw in there and now I need to push this in. Ooh, it's actually not that hard. This is thin, lightweight tubing. So that was easy for me to push that into place. And we'll just set that like that for now. Because now we'll have to come back up to the front and we need to adjust this. So I want this to sit level, right? 
because that makes sense. Why wouldn't it be level? Uh, and then these attach here. So my bike already had these screws. However, they have nice, beautiful chrome ones to use. Well, they have one chrome one. What? Oh, there's the other one. All right. Nice, beautiful little chrome ones to replace these, which these ones were chrome as well. But age gets even the best of us. So we'll take this new screw. And these appear like to get on there, they're going to have to flip the other way, which is no problem. I think they uh, do this on purpose, you know. So, if I do it like that, it rides just a little forward. I think that's where I'm going to go with it. No, I want it up. I want it arched up. That's for sure. Because arched down, it's, uh, it's less strong. So we'll just swap these around real quick. Like I said, I was going off the picture anyway, and the picture is not too clear. It does appear that they would go outward, but, or outward, but, uh, I'm sorry, inward. It appears in the picture on the instructions that one would place these in an inward direction. However, reality would have them go in the outward direction. And now we can put our little chrome screw in here. And we're gonna get it just about snugged all the way down, not tight, just there. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this other side. I'm gonna slide this little guy back in this little bracket here. I'm gonna pull this old rusty screw out. There it is. Put the fresh screw in. And do the same thing, get it snugged up. All right, now that we got all those snug, now we want to start getting this set to where it's going to be. So obviously, unless you're weird, which you might be, you probably want it centered over your tire. So I'm going to use these to help me center this. So let's get these so they're centered on the on here. And then we'll tighten them down. There is a particular foot pounds that you should use for these. Um, because like all hardware, they're hardware. If you go too hard, you can strip them out or snap them. Uh, and you don't want to snap your new pack rack clip-on system, do you? I sure don't. Uh, so I'm just going to use kind of the sticker as a good reference point to get these centered. Because it does look like that sticker is centered. There we go. So they're centered now. So we'll lock them down. All right. Now, luckily for me, I'm doing this right against the table so I can see that it's level. Now, it doesn't really have to be perfectly level, I'd imagine. However, I want mine to be that way. So I'm going to adjust it, slide it back and forth until I get it where I want it. And then you tighten these. And what these do is they'll clamp it against the block. Which will keep it from sliding 
forward and backward. So, as you just heard it squeaky squeak, I'm tightening them up fairly well. I'll do the same thing here on this other side. Oh, that's tight. Nice and tight. All right, and now I got one more left, right? Well, two more, sorry. Three more, four more, five more. Let's tighten these guys up. Yep, we'll get them snug. So back onto the torque values. Obviously, like I said, everything has a torque value, so you don't strip it out. Uh, you want to go what you're comfortable with with these. I don't have a torque wrench. I actually do, I'm lying. But I do know most of you guys won't have torque wrenches. So if I give you a value, that'll be useless for you anyway, won't it? Uh-huh. So, I'm not going to give you a value. Plus, then I'd have to look it up and know it myself. <laughs> yeah, see what I did there? Has screws here for some reason. That looks nice. I'm guessing that's for some kind of attachment you can get. Now we're going to tighten these ones up on this side too. Yes, get them good and tight. A brown little chocolate lab? Yeah. I think he went that way. Oh, he came from that way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And there you go. Now we've got a rack. Looks uh, almost completely centered, not 100%. So here's the thing about these, they're not made for side loads. Because side loads will bend it. It's made to hold it up and down, because that's where the tubes go, right? And that's where your triangulation is. Uh, in other words, I'm making a lot of nonsense to say, just do this. Oh, yeah. Be careful not to bend your actual bike though just a frame of this all right and there we go nice and centered ready to go ready to rock instructions here say it's good for up to 55 pounds don't carry people check all bolts make sure they're tight before each use and ensure cargo and other bags are firmly attached so there you go look at that now I look like a nerd I can go I can go across the world on this bike now that's actually my goal by the end of summer I'm intending to be able to uh, backpack across Europe with this bike you know to decide what I want to do when I grow up all right guys I've had enough fun here with this video let's move on to the next there will be more with this bike in the coming weeks as I get the rest of the parts to finish it up. We'll show you how to do all the shift cables, how to finish running the brakes. I ran the front brakes. Doot, doot. They're there. Back ones. No, the back ones aren't connected yet, so I'll show you how to do that. We'll do the handlebar tape. We'll wrap that up. We'll get our seat. We'll get our crank installed with the chain and the derailleurs. Show you how to adjust all that stuff. Uh, but for now, that's that. I hope you enjoyed this quick, easy video. Looks good on that 91 Bridgestone, too.